welcome to the Art of Code. My name is Martijn and this is part two of the drive home tutorial. Uh, in this video we will do the street lights and if you haven't checked out the first video it's probably a good idea you do that otherwise you might end up like and that wouldn't be very cool. So go check that out if you haven't already otherwise let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to move this, this dot here to the right and up. So I'm going to push it two to the right and I'm going to push it two up. And now I can't see it anymore because it's too far over there. So I'm going to push it forward a little bit to 15. Uh, and now we're going to want to move this light. So in the effect, it looks like the camera is moving, but the camera isn't actually moving. It's all the lights that are moving past the camera because that turns out to be easier to do. So what we'll do, well, like whenever you have anything animated, you want to make something that derives from this variable called iTime, which it used to be called iGlobalTime, but they changed it. So let's see what happens if I just do 15 plus T. So now you can see that my dot disappear or well it moved really far away if i reset my scene and you can see that it starts at 15 and it just moves slowly away from the camera well we don't want it to move away we want it to move towards us so let's see what happens here so now it starts at 15 and moves towards us um, and now i don't want it to start at 15 let's push it farther away so now it starts at 100 and it's slowly moving forward but it takes 100 seconds for it now to come all the way past us. So let's make that faster. Let's do it in one second. So I just multiply my time, time value by 100. And now you can see that it just flies off past us. But it keeps going after that. And I don't want that. I want to recycle the light. So as soon as it gets past me, I want it to, to reset it to where it was. Uh, so in other words, as, as, so it starts at 100 and it goes to zero and when it's at zero, I want it back at 100. So what that means is that this T value, I want it to start at zero, go to one, but then past one, I want it to go back to zero. And there's a function for that and that's called fract. And fract, what fract does is it returns the fractional value of this number T here. So if my T is 0.5 then it will just return 0.5 but if my t is 2.53 then it will it will subtract 2 and it will just uh, return me uh, 0.53 so let's see what that does so now you see we have a dot that starts at 100 comes it comes back to zero and as soon as it's zero it, as soon as it's at zero it gets reset to 100 which is what we want so now the second thing that I want is I want multiple dots, right? So what I could do is I could just copy this a bunch of times, or rather copy that a bunch of times. But a better way of doing this is with a for loop. And if you're a programmer, then you're familiar with this. If not, then, uh, then just hang on a second and I'll explain it to you. Let me just type it out first. Plus equals s and close bracket. So what a for loop does is the first time it gets here, it will initialize this variable i to zero. And then it will check if this condition is true. If, well, in this case, if i is zero, then i is smaller than one, so this is true. So then it will execute what is in this loop. And when it's done with the, with the code, it will get here and it will come back here. And now it will add this value s to my i. And I'm just gonna write this value s over here as one over 10, or in other words, 0 0.1. And it will become clear in a second why, why it's that. So each time I get here, uh, I add 0 0.1 to my i value, right? So the first time it's zero, the second time it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and it keeps doing that until it finds a number that is not smaller than one, which is on the 11th go around, because on the 11th go around, this will be one. Uh, and one is not smaller than one, so it will drop out. Okay, so now I have a piece of code that gets executed a bunch of times. Um, so now what I want to do is let, let's just go over here and make a value m for mask that I initialize at zero. 
and now inside of the loop I'm going to add to that mask each time I go through the loop. And now what I want is for each time I go through this loop, I want this, this I like, I want the dot to be at a different depth. Or in other words, I want a different value for this, for 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 well for this basically for for the fract of t. So let me just take this out and call this t i, and then make a value t i here. And like what I'll do, so so this this uh, wouldn't change anything. So what I what what I'll do here now is. Um, each time I go through this, let, let's just add the number i to this. So the first time I go through this, i is zero, so I just get the fract of t. The second time I go through this, is t plus 0.1 or 0.2, 0.3, and so on and so forth. So let me just over here also change it to m, and let's see what happens. And now I have a bunch of points. Amazing. So they're going a little bit fast, so let me just multiply my time value by some smaller than one value to make it go slower. And now uh, one thing that I notice is that my points get smaller as they go into the distance, which for actual objects that would make sense, but for what we're trying to do, which is these out of focus highlights, that is not the case. They don't get smaller as they go farther away, they just get more faint. So what I have to do in my bokeh function here is I have to compensate for the size so that the size does not get smaller um, or the perceived size doesn't get smaller. So for that I have to actually multiply the size by some number that gets larger as we get farther away to compensate for that. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to multiply it by length of p. And what does that mean, length of p? Well, p is the point in 3D space where my point, where my highlight is. And if I do the length of P, that's basically uh, giving me the distance from point P to the origin. And my camera is not exactly at the origin, but almost, so, so this will, will work. So let me see. Okay, so that gives me a nuclear explosion. And what I have to do for that is I have to just change my size of my point over here. And now you see that we have points that do not get smaller as they go farther away. Great. So now, but we want points that fade out as we, as we go farther away. In other words, we want to multiply this bokeh by a smaller and smaller number off into the distance and all the way at 100 we want to multiply it by zero so that it's completely disappeared. Well, we have a number that is zero over here and one over here, which is this number ti. So if I multiply by ti, you can see that it fades out into the distance. And the nice thing about numbers between 0 and 1, which this number is, right, because it comes out of a fract, so each, each number that comes out of this will always be between 0 and 1. Um, I can multiply this by itself to, to shape the curve, because right now I think over here it's too bright still. So, well, I can multiply it by itself to make that go less. And if you want to know why that is, let's really quickly go to Desmos and check this out. So, so normally if we have our x, so on the, on the interval of 0 to 1, right? So, so if we just multiply it by ti, then, then in the distance it's 0, yes, and then it just linearly goes, uh, gets brighter and brighter and brighter. But if I multiply this by itself, like now I can shape this curve so that, let's say, it stays at 0 longer before it goes to 1. And I can keep doing this, so I can keep shaping this like this. So I can push it more and more and more. Uh, and that's a neat thing that you can do with numbers, that, especially between 0 and 1. So, cool. All right, so now we have that. Let, let's multiply it one more time to fade it off a bit more. Great. So now we want lights on the other side. And one way to do that is to copy this entire thing and just change this 2 to a minus 2. But a better way would be to fold the screen in half or fold the space in half so that I get my lights on the other side for free. So what I can do for that is I can go here and I can take the, the ray that I have, my camera ray over here. Um, and I think on the previous one I call it get ray. Right now it's camera setup, but it's the same thing. Um, 
and the direction of my ray and then the x component of the direction. So the x component of the direction tells me whether I'm looking this way or I'm looking that way. And I'm, I can tell it that, well, whenever that's negative, uh, just make it positive. Or in other words, take the absolute value of that. And so now I get my other side for free. That's basically the same thing as I've done in previous tutorials where I, where I do absolute on uh, the positions of stuff in 2D. So great. So now the last thing I want to do here is that like right now you notice that these lights are perfectly mirrored. So they come both at two at a time. But what I want is I want, uh, I, I want one to come on the right and then one to come on the left and, and go like that. So in other words, I have to offset one of the sides. So for that, I first want to create a variable called side that is zero on one side and, and one on the other side. And what I can do for that is I can use a step function for that. Uh, and let's take the RDX again and then use zero. So what this does, it's the same as smooth step basically, it's just not smooth. So instead of having a nice smooth step, we have a, a something that stays at zero and then boom, it goes to one and it stays at one. So, so yeah, so wherever RDX is negative, this will be zero and where it's positive, this will be one. And obviously I have to do this before I do my absolute value. Otherwise all of, all of my RDXs will be larger than one. And then in order to shift, so in order to shift one of the sides, I have to screw around with this value over here. So I just add my side over here and then let's see, let's say I, I, I shift it over by step S. Well, if I do that, then you will not see any difference. Hang on a second. I forgot a decimal point over here. You will not see any difference because every light just shifted over exactly to the next light. What I want is I want to shift over half of that step. Okay, so now you have the lights are opposite each time. Okay, so now the last thing I'm going to do before I end this video is we're going to stick this in its own function. So I'm going to do vec3 street lights. And I'm going to throw a ray in there and I'm going to throw a time value in there. And then I'm going to take this entire thing here from here to here. I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to throw that in here. And instead of that call here, let me just get rid of that and say return. And now over here I can say vec3 call equals street lights and then throw my r into it and throw my t into it and I'm not with a capital there and now you see well, that didn't change anything so that means it worked so that's the street lights done uh, i hope you join me next time for the lights of the oncoming traffic see you next time